Hey, what's up, Photo Booth family? It is Tiffany back with another video. Today, we are going to talk about six things you should consider before you start your 360 photo booth business. Um, I don't know about you guys, but there are tons of things that are out there that you can think about, whether it's um, what type of device you want to record on, where should you buy from, what kind of props. Um, there's just a lot of things that you can kind of get um, analysis paralysis, I guess you could say, from before you start your business. So I'm just going to go over six of those kind of major things that you want to have figured out. And then from there, once you make those decisions, you can pull the trigger on starting your business. So before we start talking about that, make sure that you like this video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell. So you can make sure that you get notified when I come with the juice. You already know what it is. All right. So first things first, this is sort of a, a bonus tip. I would say the first thing that you want to do is make a business plan. Um, you want to consider like, what kind of market am I going to be going after? Am I focused on weddings? Am I focused on luxury weddings? Am I focused on events? So maybe like just birthdays, anniversaries, things of that nature. Am I focused on the uh, corporate space? Am I focused on maybe going after schools and some of their events? So there's just so many different um, niches, I guess you should, you could say um, that you can, uh, go after or market to within the 360 photo booth business. So you kind of want to, you know, lay out your marketing or your business plan, excuse me, think about what is your target market, thinking about how you're going to market and, you know, go after those people. Um, thinking about, you know, what does your business going to look like, you know, six months to a year from now, just kind of make a plan. What is your vision? Essentially, what are you going after? What are your goals? Like, well, how much money are you looking to make? So these are some kind of some of the questions you might want to answer before you think about some of the other details of your business. Because if you're like, hey, I want to keep my business pretty small. I only want to be busy maybe one week in a month. I only, you know, want to go after, you know, small, small businesses. I don't want to go after anything really big. Then again, you will consider all of that when you're making some of these other decisions that I'm going to talk about here in a second. So one of the major questions that I get asked about is recording devices. Which, you know, how do I make a decision on that? Do I want to do iPad, iPhone, GoPro, DSLR? There are a lot of different directions you could go with this. Me personally, I think the easiest surefire route to make sure that you're not struggling with connectivity issues um, or software issues, things of that nature, would be to have an iPhone, preferably um, 11 or greater. And I would definitely say get the larger size, so the 11 Max or the 12 Pro Max uh, would definitely be, you know, in your favor because I find the smaller iPhones, are they're just harder to type on. It's just, you want a bigger screen. So I would say go with, if you have like a 12 or a 13 Pro Max, this would be ideal. You don't necessarily have to have a 14, but I would definitely start here just for ease of use. Um, and then also, like I said, with connecting to the different software, you're gonna have the most options with an iPhone. And you're gonna have the best quality videos. So that is personally where I would start. That is where we started. Um, I think I, I talked about a GoPro in another one of my videos and how I struggled with connectivity issues. So I ended up just giving up on the GoPro and just sticking with iPhone. Uh, I personally am an Android user, so I wanted to use that for the booth, but again, I'm limited in the type of software I can use. So I ended up not going that route. Um, because I wanted to be able to use Snapic and TouchFix and some of the more popular software. Uh, so the next thing you want to consider is the, the size of booth. Because I've read so many comments on Facebook, like I bought this huge 40, um, the 40 inch size booth, and it doesn't fit in my car. So I'll give you a tip, guys. You probably want to measure your car. If you have a car, first of all, I don't know if you, you want to consider doing the booth. Or maybe you want to think about getting an SUV or a truck or a van. I personally just so happened to have transitioned from a car to a SUV before I even started this business. So it, it worked out perfectly for me. I honestly, I didn't even measure it. <laughs> it just so happened me and my sister, you know, we were like, what size do we want? Maybe get in the middle. I think we got a 34 uh, inch, if memory serves me right. So it wasn't super big. It fits in or no, excuse me. We got a 39 inch. So it fits in the back of our trucks and it worked out perfectly. But if I were you, Planning ahead of time, I would measure the back of my car or truck to make sure I have enough width that the booth can fit in there um, pretty easily. And then that way you can make the decision on what size booth you want. We wanted to have a booth that could fit, you know, about three to four people. And so our booth is just a perfect size. It's not so huge that it doesn't fit in our car. It's not so small that only one to two people can fit on it. In my opinion, if you're going to make the investment to get the booth, I don't think you should get one that only fits one or two people. It's just not as fun. 
Um, and then we've actually gotten questions from uh, customers like, hey, how many people can fit on your booth? So we like being able to say, hey, up to five adults can actually fit on our booth at one time. So if they want to do that, they can. So the sizing worked out perfect for us. If I were to do it over again, I would definitely measure before I <laughs> before I bought my booth. So that is a, a tip for you because I've read people like, hey, I bought this booth and now I have to buy a minivan because I can't even get it to fit in my truck or my car. So that is uh, definitely one thing you want to consider when you are purchasing your booth. The next thing, um, researching vendors. So there are a myriad of different places you can buy photo booths from. Um, I'm sure if you're you know, considering this business, you figure that out. We decided to go with OrcaView. This is not a paid sponsorship video, so OrcaView didn't pay me to say this, but we were just kind of a little um, risk averse we consider Alibaba because I had actually, you know, done a bunch of research before we started. And, you know, one of the YouTubers I follow, David Rodriguez, I'm sure you guys are familiar with him. If you're in the photo booth space, um, he was, you know, ranting and raving, hey, I have a vendor from Alibaba. She's great. It worked out perfectly. Good pricing. It got here in plenty of time. But for us as women, we were just kind of concerned that if anything went wrong with the booth, who was going to be here to help us troubleshoot? We would then have to be contacting vendors in China. It just seemed like a lot of hassle when Orca View actually is about 45 minutes away from me. So if anything were to happen within that uh, warranty period, we could take it up to Orca View. And we've actually had to do that. We've had a couple of things come up. But we had to contact them and they were like, hey, stop by, you know, anytime, whatever, we'll fix it. So for us, Orca View worked out, although they are a little expensive. I will say they're on the more expensive end. Um, there are some other U.S. vendors that are someone, somewhere in the middle between Orca View and Alibaba. So if, you, if you're wanting to go, the discount rate, Alibaba is probably the best route finding one of those vendors. Uh, there's plenty of them out there. If you want to go Surefire, probably safer, you know, less risk route, I would recommend OrcaView or one of the U.S.-based vendors. And then there's always Amazon, right? Like Amazon sells everything. So that's an option as well that we consider. Uh, but like I said, we landed on OrcaView. It worked out perfectly for us. All right. So uh, the next thing making a budget so back to the first tip that i started out with about your business plan how much money you're looking to invest is all going to come back to what are you trying to do with this business are you trying to replace your income are you trying to supplement your income are you just looking to have fun and do something on the weekend all of these decisions again are going to come back to your business plan and what you're looking to do with your business because you're not going to want to go cheap on something like this if you're looking to have this business long term if you're looking to really make good money and supplement your income with it. Because again, what's the point of paying, you know, some for some cheap booth to come from Alibaba? Not that all Alibaba booths are cheap. I'm just saying not, you know, you're not going to want to pick some, the cheapest vendor you can find on Alibaba because you, you know, you want something long-term. You want something that's sustainable. You want a booth that's going to be reliable. So again, all of these things are going to be, you're going to be taking this into consideration when you're deciding what vendor, what size of booth, you know, wh who am I buying this booth from? because it's all gonna come back to your business plan and your goals. Both the business plan, I would say, and your goals kind of tie into and the budget. Really, it all comes together. But bottom line is, you're gonna wanna make your budget because you're gonna say, hey, how much money do I need to invest upfront? Not for just the booth. I mean, we're talking, you're gonna have to buy pro uh, props. If you don't have an iPhone already, you're gonna have to buy a phone. You might wanna buy an iPad for your sharing station. You're gonna have to buy lighting, table, chairs, um, tablecloths, all types of different kind of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, all in, I would say when we first got started, we probably spent upwards of four or five grand, which is not a lot when you think about within three or four months, you can make that money back pretty quickly. Uh, for us, we're continuing to invest different things in our business, buying backdrops, you know, refining our prop game, making sure we have some of the best props. And, you know, we just want to keep making our business better. So, for me, it was a long-term investment, so I didn't mind spending as much up front. But again, everyone's business plan and their goals are not going to be the same. So with that said, that pretty much covers most of the tips I want to give you guys. I think I did mention goals in passing a couple of times, so maybe making a goal. For us, it was, hey, we want to have at least one event a weekend. I found out that doing multiple events in one weekend was just too overwhelming for me. I have a very stressful, high-intense job, a nine-to-five job. so. You know, this business, again, was just to supplement my income. It wasn't something that I necessarily had to do. So I said, me having two or three events a weekend, it was just too much. I didn't feel like I had a break the entire weekend. My weekend was pretty much gone. And then I was, you know, had to go back to work on Monday. And it just, 
it was too much for me. Uh, but again, going back to your business plan, going back to how much money you want to make and your budget and things that you're needing to do will determine how many events a week do you want? How many, you know, how much money are you looking to make every week or every month? Setting those business goals again, make sure that all of this kind of comes together and that you are feeling successful and feeling confident about your business. Because I run into a lot of people online. Hey, I don't have any events. Hey, how do I market? Hey, how do I do all of this? ties back into your business plan. Are you targeting the people that you said in your business plan that you were going to target? Are you finding out what are the best ways to contact those people? You know, is your business strategy or marketing strategy just posting on social media solely and not reaching out to anybody? Um, I, I said it on uh, probably my first video. Direct contact with people is all, it always goes a long way. It is one of the hardest things to do, I would say for me as an introvert, but I will say that it goes a long way. And again, this goes back to me determining um, very early, you know, what I thought was probably my niche market and kind of tweaking that based on my experience. You might start off saying, hey, I want my niche market to be X. And then maybe a few months in, you find out, hey, I really don't, I don't, I don't really like doing weddings. It's, it's a lot that goes into that. I prefer just doing school events or I prefer just doing festivals and stuff like that. So I would say, don't be afraid to tweak your business plan as you learn more and you get more into the business. You get more refined with you know some of your results and you're finding out different marketing strategies work better um, you could go back to that business plan and tweak it as you learn and grow in your business all right so with that said i have been talking way too long and so i'm going to stop talking now and i'm going to let you guys go so you can get started on your goals and your business plan and thinking about how you're going to strategize and get ready to start your 360 photo booth business all right, so with that being said, go ahead and drop in the comments if you guys have any questions or any topics that you want me to cover. I will be sure to be checking out those comments and responding to you as I can. And I wish you best wishes on your 360 photo booth journey. All right, catch you guys next time.